So this is the walk behind leaf blower from last Saturday's yard sale shopping. Grabbed it for 45 bucks. Only thing I know about it is um, they were using it last year. They're always using it last year, don't you know? But it was having carburetor problems. And uh, I bought it as is, not running. And it's up to me, us, to figure out what's wrong with it. See if we get it back to running condition. Let's get set up. We'll get it up in the air, start looking into it. See if we can bring it back to life. Just bounce it and off that rev limiter. Let's go pull the plug out of it. See if it has spark. We'll start with that. I don't see any fuel in the tank. Plug looks a little on the carbony side. Stuck. That's what happens when you use the wrong size. Unstuck. Seems like a short plug for this motor. Might not be the right one. Let's, do we have an on-off switch anywhere? I don't see a power switch on the cover. Throttles up in the choke position. Nope, I don't see one. Let's see what we get. We got spark and, and stuff. Might be a good idea to check see if anything's in it. For oil. Uh, that is looking pretty low. I know it's leaning on an angle, but it looks lower than it should. Let's see what we got. That's enough in to run it. I want to run it a little bit, get it, all the crap floating around, then we'll change it. Let's I'm gonna spray a little bit of fuel down it. See if it'll, it'll cough over. On there. You guys tell it's bike week. A little bit more than that. There you go. So I catch him by a thread. She should go. Smell it. I heard a little ball of fire. <laughs> yeah, she'll go. Let's get into that carb and uh, go to resuscitation in the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. So this setup's a little different than, uh, than we normally see here. You knew I wasn't gonna have the right one for that. So this goes right through as a long stem and then we have to take this one out and we, then we can get the knuckle off. You know, if we have to take this one all the way off. Maybe we'll just push down on it, yeah. I would suspect... I'm trying to figure out if the hardware's been apart before. I want to say it was probably... maybe cleaned but not the bowl wasn't taken down. Maybe they just kind of tried to wash some stuff through it. Right now yeah, we got one more up here. Forgot one. Nah, it hasn't been apart. So with the dirt on the screws, nothing, nothing's been disturbed, which is kind of a good thing actually. I'd rather have it that way than, than not. funky for linkage we got to remember
in one spot. I believe there's only one spot on the throttle level. Yeah, there is. So as long as you don't take that apart, it should be fine. Hope you can get in behind it. Get the gas line off yet too. That guy. Gotta get rid of that clip for the carb. And let's go grab a little pliers for that guy. Hopefully they're on top. They are. Come on, carburetor. Let's go bring this over to the bench. Do a little dissecting. Looks like somebody put a carb kit in it or something at one point because that's not the original screws. That's way too new. Hopefully it's just got dirt in it. Yeah, let's see about getting this apart. So this jet, I believe, goes right through the center. So this assembly has to come out first before we can split the top. Pretty sure. We'll find out in a minute. We take this out and then there's another one up behind it. I would say the fact that white powder is coming out of it is not a good sign. I'm not sure if it has one in there or not. Oof. I wasn't liking that. Yeah, nothing worse than getting one that somebody else has tried to take apart, stripped the screw out of it, and then left it for dead. Sold it at the yard sale, and now you're dealing with it. I kind of want to put some lube down in there. Let's go throw a little. Make it wet. Make it rain. You open it. Getting there. Maybe a little bit better going wider. Now that's far enough back with the screwdriver can go in. Yeah, we got her. Yep. Uh, I would say they are looking somewhat clogged. We're looking at holes right there. Let's go crack open the top of it. Let's see what the real story is. Let's speed this part up, shall we? That has not been a part in a long time. Let's get the idle mixture screw out. So don't bash it and break it. Let's uh, find something with a little more authority to hit it with. All else fails. Okay. Yeah, pretty powdery. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling foul on the uh, rain last year part though. 
I don't see anything terrible. Hopefully the float is not sunk. I'm going to find out when we throw that in the washer. Where is the little pliers? We used them earlier. <laughs> Where'd they go? Don't look too bad. It does look like somebody did a carb kit on this a while ago, though. Because that's not the original gasket. I think I am going to leave that part alone. If I tear that gasket off, I'm afraid I'm going to lose it. I don't have a replacement. So yeah, we're going to leave that alone. And do our best just to clean it up. It doesn't look too bad anyway. But the bottom half, we will soak and try to get this bowl a little less. See how that makes out too. Unfortunately, I only turned it on 10 minutes ago, so it's still warming up. But that should not stop us from doing our thing. Yes, I have to get more fluid. I know, I need to get more fluid. <laughs> we are gonna want... We're gonna want to flip that halfway through. How's that? Jet, that guy in. And uh, we'll let her cook for a while. heating up. Let's go take a look at how some other things are. Yeah, we're going to want some light. That actually looks pretty good. Try to use, there we go. It's pretty good on the bottom. I don't have any cracks or anything in it. Got a shut off valve and a fuel filter. Kind of works. Uh, that was in the on position. We'll probably flush a little bit of fuel through it and see how it does. Let's uh, want to change the oil in it. Could blow it out a little. Fill those tires up. I haven't done that. It's kind of keeping it from rolling around, actually. Yeah, could do that. Find out these will stay up. Come back tomorrow morning and they're flat again. So we think it's going to be easier. Should we take that guy out and let it try to come out of that hole and let it piss around it? Or should we just take one of the, these two side guys out and turn it on its side? And it's going to piss all over the tires. It's going to make a mess either way. Let's go try it with the. Uh, the regular plug. Let's see if we can get that guy cracked loose. It's slipping off of there. These machines, generally don't, you know, if a homeowner has them, they generally don't get used very much. Kind of like a rototiller. Used twice a year for an hour each time. Say we lean it. Looks like a good place for a block of wood under that tire. Yeah, let's see what the oil looks like. Not ah, too bad. I don't see little shiny metal bits floating around in it. It's dark, but it's not contaminated with metal at least. I figure while we're waiting. Um, on the yard sale video, we're talking about. Water getting into gas of old equipment and uh, absorbing water and et cetera. Uh, a couple people wrote back on that, some kind of commenting that the, what we're talking about first is the fuel in my area is 10% 10, 10 ethanol and you know, 90% whatever, regular gas. And the ethanol, in my opinion, attracts moisture. And someone was saying though, actually there's water 
in the ethanol and it separates and it falls out. I think actually probably both of those are true. But what I see more of in my area is because there's such a big temperature difference between day and night and winter and summer, that things that are open to the atmosphere, like this blower right here, uh, exchange air with the outside much more and it takes the moisture out of the air, I find, and it kind of adds, that's where I see the water coming from. I find that if something is sealed, like this container, you actually can kind of see how it's puffed up. I don't know if it'll pop air out when I go to... Right, that's kind of sealed. So that's not really changing any air. The same air is just expanding and contracting within it. So it's not uh, accessing any more uh, moisture from the air. I find this will hold, uh, stay a lot longer than air that, uh, than fuel that is just in a machine where it's kind of vented to the outside. Where's the gas cap? And these gas caps are vented to atmosphere. It, it has to be because, um, you know, if you put your finger over the top of a straw, the fluid can't come out of it. So if you put a cap on top of the fuel tank and you're trying to draw fuel to the carburetor at some point, it won't be able to flow until air can come back in behind it. So by nature, these are open to the atmosphere. You know, your car, you, you crack the gas cap. It uh, can maintain pressure. Well, these systems don't do that. So again, like wherever they're stored, they kind of expand and contract or draw in and draw out air as uh, the seasons kind of change. And that's what I noticed. And the same with the carb. The float bowl, of course the carb's not here, but the float bowl is open to the atmosphere also. And it, it, again, it, that cup of fuel that's in there is uh, constantly exchanging air uh, as uh, time is going on too, and also has water uh, get attracted to it. Not saying that it doesn't, the, the fuel, you know, I, that's beyond, you know, <laughs> the chemistry of it is beyond me, but um, alcohol, uh, I guess is, is part water. If someone was writing like, um, you know, something's 130 proof, that means it is, I forgot what the percentage of it would be for water. And if you separate the two, you know, then that's where the water comes from. But I find it, it tracks it out of the, out of the air. I'm sticking with it. <laughs> My opinion anyway. All right, guys, let me go uh, see if that carpet is ready to go. Let's go clean up that seat for the needle. A little. It looks pretty good. I looked inside it. It looked... Um, Pretty shiny, but I'm more concerned with any scum that's on the sides of the walls more. Not bad. How much dirt came off at all? Good. Run some carb cleaner through the idle circuit. Clean this off a little bit. We'll get ready for the rest of it. The needle, I'm not sure what's gonna show. The needle's got a little bit of shoulder on it where it touches the seal, that, that's a, a soft tip. And it's got a little bit of a ridge where it touches, but as long as it, it seals, I don't care. To give her a little bit of bath, huh? Keep your O rings out of there. Good. Now it's cooking. Pretty good. I'm gonna try not to knock off what's left of that gasket because it's whatever's stuck on there, it's missing on the other half of the gasket. And I don't have a replacement, so we're gonna leave that well enough alone. And the float was still floating. That's a good sign. They look much cleaner.
to wire wheel that too. A little light. Yeah, those threads are a little gummed up too. That's our, our adjustment. So we want that kind of free. I don't want to lose the packing. And then we'll leave that alone. But we want to get rid of that crud right there. We'll take that on the wire wheel. There's an O-ring and a washer in there. I left it alone. And the spring kind of pushes it together and makes a seal around there. We don't have a carb kit, so I'm not going to mess with it. Move that back for a while. I think we are ready to rock and roll. Leave that float just like it is. Clean it a little bit more. Goes in the other half. Don't we? Where's our pin? It looks like it's sitting kind of high. That's a little on the proud side. That should be much more. I wonder if that clip is. I'm gonna flip that clip around. It's sealing, but. with the pinko again. Damn it. I don't know if I want to adjust that or not. You bend the tab. That should be almost parallel when it's upside down. Yeah, let me tweak that a little. You can set up the bend net. Hey, you're supposed to put a, a roll pin under them and measure them and all. Yep. We're just going, going rogue. Let's try that. So if there's something that changes angles a lot, you want a little more fuel in it because it could starve. And on the other side of it, if you go too much, it'll flood over, especially, you know, this having a kind of compromised gasket could be an issue. Okay. Trying to keep it in front of the camera. That's that's more how I like it. Almost st straight with the uh, the body, maybe a hair too much. We're going with it. Right, I think we can put these two guys together. So make sure they don't bind up on us. I'm going to put that together and I'm going to check out one more time. Just make sure when I flip the carburetor over and I blow in through the, in, the, uh, the fuel inlet that it shuts off. So if it doesn't, 
and then it's just going to overflow. The fuel will never shut off, it'll just overflow and start pouring out the bottom of the carburetor. This style of carburetor, it won't flood the engine out, but it'll just essentially dump it on the ground. It'll come out the, the bottom of the elbow right there. Let's make sure. It's fine. All right, Long John, you're going in. We need the little screwdriver with the no contaminants on the end of it. Nothing like screwing in a, a dog hair. I think that happened to me on the last one too, didn't it? Let's run that one in. That might bottom out on the sides before I get it seated. Yeah. Got to switch over to a the ground down screwdriver. We need the washer for that guy. Now that goes in, and your adjustment is how much fuel gets sucked up through that that hole in the middle, depending on how far this gets to pinch that off. So that's your adjustment for your main your main fuel mixture is that guy. Touches. I'm gonna go half one, one and a half two right in that area. Start there, and this is for our idle speed, I believe. We'll run that one until it touches, and we'll give that one about yeah, about one one and a half back. I think an O-ring. Does the O-ring go there? Remember? I think it does. And we get to go put that guy back on the machine. And yes, I filled it with oil. And I think through the magic of video, we'll speed this up and we'll have that carb magically installed. Because judging by the time, the amount of time it's taking me to put the oil cap on, <laughs> it's going to take me a while to put that on there. All right, let's get that carb back on. Because that tank is so dry, before I put fuel on, I'm going to try blowing air in it and see if there's any like just dusty, dirty stuff that wants to be able to come out of there. It's not stuck in it. Again, it looked pretty clean, but... I saw something come out of there. I'm going to put fuel on it, and then uh, before we put the fuel line on, we'll let that purge through and see if any debris comes out. Let's see if that has a good flow going through it, and it's clean. It should have like a, a purpley pink tinge to it because of the type of fuel it is. It's a uh, racing fuel. Yeah, a little bit of crap came out. Just a little bit of dirt. But better here than in the flow pole, right? right? Let's go put that fuel line on. The line looks pretty decent. You skinny pliers, you. All right, tool for the right job. Three of them at the same time. There we go. I'll turn the gas on. You remember what I just said about fuel line? Yeah, I'll listen to that. My fuel line's no good. Let's go make a new one. I'm gonna reuse the uh, fuel filter. I just wanna blow through it. And the reason why I'm re reusing it, you can't put like a paper filter on it, on a system that doesn't have a fuel pump, the fuel will stop flowing through on a paper filter, it won't be able to supply enough. What's inside these essentially is just a piece of screen, not much to them. You can look right through them, I'm not sure if the camera's going to work on this or not, but 
right dead center of it is just a piece essentially it looks like a door screen just much finer and uh, it'll catch any kind of big particles but that's about it so I'm sorry just blowing out putting it back in as you can get very loud very quick and a bunch of air is gonna come shooting out of here and blowing crap all over the place but that's our main adjustment and the other one is for idle speed so you're gonna see me kind of twerking with this I'm gonna choke it once I get the choke off I'm gonna rev it up I'm gonna run the main in until it starts bogging I'm gonna back it out and listen to it then I'm gonna bring it down to an idle and I'm gonna to listen to the idle speed and run that one in and out and it may go back and forth one does affect the other the idle does affect the main a little bit but uh, we'll go back and forth and tweak them find get a good smooth spot and then we'll be good with it so hopefully we fire up that should be choke on gas on it's flooding over <laughs> that's what i get for adjusting that float you see it it's weeping so that's why somebody took that float and bent it the other way or i shouldn't have bent it i should say Hey, back to the bench. Let's see if we can mend our ways. Sometimes you just miss it by a little, you know? Okay. Let's put that back where it was. See how that looks. Like top gasket being crappy doesn't help, but that's sitting still. It should not be leaking. Not, the level of uh, fuel should not be going that high. The old rule, you just want to only change one thing at a time to see what the difference is. Well, that's a... <laughs> I think we're uh, compensating a little too far the other way. Let's see if we can... Uh, That's better. The other part too is it could be that that needle is uh is just no good. It's not sealing all the way. So what happens is the fuel level keeps just rising, rising, rising in the bowl, over floods itself, and then pours into the uh, uh, throat of the carburetor. That's why you saw the fuel dripping out of it. That's what was happening. The shut off wasn't shutting off. All right, let's go put her all back together. Try it one more time. What could be what was wrong with this the whole time? And people, it just needs a needle and seat and it's flooding itself over. Not sure. We're going to find out though. Okay. Again, I'm not sure what plug it's supposed to have. So I'll look it up, but I'll try.
got her. Uh, the plug might have been an issue. Um, I'm gonna pop the air cleaner back on, tweak it one more time. We're gonna let it run a little. See, it's blowing some smoke, but that may just be for uh, first time Z's, but it may also be beat too. And that one tire went flat, sitting over there. I sprayed it down. It's like the rim's leaking right there. It's got a, a dent to it. I got dropped off of something and hit. I'm gonna try putting a pair of uh, big water pumps on there and see if we can just kind of bend that lip back in. At least it's not the tire. Let's see if we can make it stop blowing bubbles without taking it apart. Let's see if we can get on that. Mostly bent back. Might let the air out of it and give it a good. Yeah. Works better when you say that. There we go. It's gonna fight me. It is. So what I've tried on a couple things already was that flex seal. It isn't a product promotion, but Flex Seal. I grabbed some and I wanted to see how it worked on the inside of a dry rod of tires if it would seal up the pores. And it didn't do that, but what I did find so far is that as a, as a bead seal, it seems like it works quite good. So if we can get that guy away from there. Get pulled away. And I want to blow dry that out. And I'm going to spray some Flex Seal on there and let it seal back up. Fill that back guy up. That guy. Let's fill that guy back up. Let's see. It goes away. Pretty much it smells like regular bead seal that you put on with a brush. It kind of smells like it too. But it, what I like about that is because it's a spray, you can kind of get it in there. It takes a little bit of a mess, but I'm not that concerned about it. On this. stuff out of our way. She still leak like a sieve. And there you go. I hope that's set up. I don't see big bubbles coming out. I'm gonna spray the rest of it, make sure it's okay. Well the gas has been on the whole time. I don't see that leaking anymore. It still needs a it does need a needle. It's probably the issue it's had for a while and I don't see it was right there I don't see too much of anything so I'm gonna keep trying that for a while I'm gonna keep seeing if uh, that stuff will work if so I'll add it to my stable of tricks Let's go let her down on the ground and we'll run it for a while. See how it does as far as smoke is concerned. Try it with no choke first.
That cable's beat. Straighten that back out. We'll throw some fluid down and see if it'll come back, but we have to steal the cable. I think I have a stash of these anyway. I grab my stash of cables. One of those should probably work. Where's this? I think that is just a cable. Let's put the right ends on it. Let's see if we can find one with a decent throttle. One that looks like that one. That one might not be too bad. We got one that has a hole in it for so the bolt through. That guy. See if we can set that one up. Let's see if we can give uh, the original cable a little something something. Let's see if we can push some fluid down it and see if it'll free up. This is a cable oiler. Yeah, we're not going to get it. So I'd rather leave the original on there. If we can, just because of even the aesthetics, you know, it looks better. Made for it. You know. That might do it. That might have got her. Maybe it's oozing out down here. Looks like it might be oozing out down here too. I may have gotten the length of that. I'm going to work that a little bit. And one of these two are going back on. They end up putting the old one back on. I think uh, that will be a lot better. Just for the even just the aesthetics of it, the cable's the right length that it exits the correct location. I have a feeling what the problem was the cable was exiting on the other side of the handlebar and it was dropping down here. I think it was just getting too pinched at this corner, causing a lot of restriction. And now we're good. Unfortunately, once that kind of kinks up like that, it has a tendency to want to do it again. It's, it's you know, loses its temper, so to speak. The wire gets kind of, you know, soft and getting bent. But that should do it. Full throttle and, and idle is back again. And uh, cut off and go all the way. It has to uh, ground out and shut the spark off so that it uh, kills the motor. Well, guys, I think we're all set. Uh, possibly if the carp is leaking again, I'm going to grab a carp kit or at least a needle and seat for it to stop that from happening. That may be its, its whole history it had in the past. I don't know. Tire seems to be okay. It runs good. The smoke is kind of going away. I think it, after it runs a little bit, it may be fine. Even if it does smoke a little bit, that's fine. It is what it is. I think it'll run a long time that way. Uh, I probably will use it for a couple hours in the fall and a couple hours in the spring and we'll throw it over Brian's house. Brian's got more yard to do so he'll probably be uh, you know, a couple hours with it too. So with that guys, we're going to sign off. Thanks for hanging out in the garage with me just doing some wrenching. Took us a couple tries to get this one but uh, we got it I think. So score to me. We won one. Well, so it's got to be the shortest amusement park ride ever. Well, at least it comes right back. <laughs> I forgot to say, whoa. I think that. Awesome. Check the brakes. <laughs>